going to go to the verse 28 and 29. I'm just going to read two verses. 28 and 29. Ready? Read. And the Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me. Take heed to thyself. See my face no more. For in that day, thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. I want you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor that the devil that torments you, that shall never see them anymore. <laughs> the devil that torments you, that shall see them no more. Change because one is to 
blessing the children of God, they are the one who want the deliverance of the children of God. And we encounter that in our day to day life. Where there are people who are against your progress in life. And we call them the enemy of our progress. And there are people who want you to succeed. And we call them our destiny hand. God wants each and every one of us to be a destiny hand, a promotion hand. A dream helper. God wants us to be the ones who will bless other people. They don't have to be from your family. They don't have to be from your tribe. They don't have to be from your nation. But they have to be from the holy nation. And I'll explain to you that the holy nation is the race of the body of individuals that has come together under the leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ. So always you seek to be a holy nation whereby Christ is the preeminence. And in this discussion, Pharaoh and Moses, there's an exchange, a bit of exchange taking place. They say, go! And the day you see my face, you shall die. And Moses boldly also said, the house broken well, because from this day forward, you will never see me no more. Sickness that has crippled you for so many years, today it shall go in Jesus' name. Amen. Lack that has crippled you, whereby you only leave check after check, after check and check, or uh, you leave by a, a, a monthly salary, and you leave only when people give away something to you by the food bank, or by help from family, today it shall go in Jesus' name. Amen. You shall stand strong and be productive and be a contributor in the society. So Pharaoh didn't know that Moses wasn't only a mere or common person, but Moses was the elect of God. Let's go to the screen what understanding means. Understanding means just the ability to translate meaning from the Bible. Your capacity, remember I've said to you many times, when they call you responsible, it means that you have the ability to respond to a situation. They don't call you responsible just for the sake of calling you, but they call you, ah, he's a responsible man, is a responsible woman because in you, you have the capacity to respond to an assignment or to a challenge or to a need. So in life, whenever you hear people say, oh, I understand, mean that he has the ability to translate the meaning from the fact. Now, the word of God is a fact. We cannot deny it. The word of God is the truth. As David says in uh, Psalm 119, verse 30, 130, saying that the angels of the world bring it light. And it gives understanding to the animal, to the sin. Now, I have said the fact, but you need understanding. To comprehend what I'm trying to say that the entrance of the word bring it light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is something when I'm saying to you, Pharaoh, you don't have to think of Egypt, but you have to think of the world system. That's understanding. In Proverbs 18, but I like to talk to this verse 15. My Bible tells me that the prudent man requires knowledge. But the hear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Now, when we hear this word, these are facts. And you need to understand what it means. It's like in Proverbs 11, 25, it says that I will shout if I take two iron and I sharpen it, so what's next? But you need to have understanding what is it God is 
say that I will sharpen I. The wise requires knowledge. The wise seeks knowledge. But the prudent requires knowledge. Why did the entrance of the world bring life? It is understanding that we are able to know when the word of God begins to be confessed by you, any ignorance that was inside of you, any sickness that was inside of you, when you say, I am here in the name of Jesus Christ, I am above and not beneath, I am richly seven and abundantly blessed. You are stating fact, and those words that you need to have an understanding what it means when I say I'm above and not beneath. It means that for the rest of your life, you shouldn't see yourself below. For the rest of your life, you shouldn't let someone's opinion become a reality in your life. For the rest of your life, you shall always see confidence in what God has put you in. He has wired you so you could be someone, somebody, when you talk, people listen. Never feel that the world is unjust. Never feel that you cannot make it in life. Never think that it is them. They can make it, it's okay, but I can't make it. That shouldn't God wants us to have the mind of Joseph that despite the numbers of uh, trials and temptations and the difficulty Joseph went through, he never let God down. We must have the mentality of the winner. We must develop The mentality that is strong. We shouldn't see ourselves down, but we should see ourselves making it to up. I may fall, but I will stand up. I may not know it now, but I'm working to work knowing it. That's understanding. Being able to translate meaning. the proud, but honor the humble. That's a fact. But what does it mean? Unless somebody gives you a meaning, then you don't understand. Because when you are proud in life, God will destroy you. But whenever you buy, you acknowledge that you are my God, you are my maker, you are my creator, God now lifts you up from the dust ground and set you upon the rock and connect you with the people you never ex expect to meet in life. Connect you to president, princes, kings. Connect you to people who have the knowledge. The people who know the, 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 the know-how. That's because you are humble before the Lord. You don't pray for yourself. Oh, I'm sick and tired of this God. If it was God, why should people are killing each other in Asia? Why people are killing each other in Africa? If there was God, why we have a bad leaders? That's got nothing to do with God. It is for lack of knowledge we begin to make such statements. Or can I hear an amen for that? Amen. So the encounter of Pharaoh and Moses was an encounter for the deliverance of the children of Israel. Because God has seen them for over four centuries, they have suffered. The same thing God is seeing you and I this morning. What we going through. But God has come to a point whereby he said that enough is enough today in the last day of your suffering. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Why don't you put your hand on your heart and say, today is my last day of suffering. Today is my last day of suffering. I shall see suffering no more. I shall see suffering no more. The Lord will be my provider. The Lord will be my provider. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So whatever your circumstances in life, remember God has not abandoned you. God
God still knowing you as the apple of his heart. But I want also to, to tell you that you may be able to have a knowledge to collect, to remember, and access information. But you need to know what to do with those information. You may take a book and you read it. You can read it. But you have to understand it. You need meaning to what you are reading. And only God, the Holy Spirit, is able to anoint you to understand that. And you're going to seek. That's your responsibility you have. Every day to make sure you understand things. You seek to know it. Nobody will do it for you. Nobody will uh, 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 contaminate you on it. You have to do personal effort. So that's why in most of the academic institutions, they had to put the system of exam or the system of assessment, the system of tests to see if you understand. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember last week we looked at the various uh, 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 meaning of what the spirit of Pharaoh does or what the spirit of Pharaoh intends. And I told you in a nutshell that the spirit of Pharaoh is basically the world system spirit. And I gave you an example back in the early 90s whereby in this country, nobody works on Sunday. When the Antichrist came and said that everybody shall work on Sunday, shops shall be open until midnight. But what time did you have any school? What time? Uh, we didn't understand what these people were doing. They were setting us up so we can fall into that. Oh, I cannot go to church because I have to go to work. And the devil has to share things in a way whereby whatever you earn is transferred to the one who supplies resources for you to live in. What you're going to find is that the most of your salary goes to your bills your rent, your mortgage, and at the end, you have nothing. It's not that they don't want you to have it, it is that they want to remain in control, they want to control you. Remember, I said to you, salary is a drug that your employer gives you to hinder you to pursue your dream in life. But the devil is a liar. You don't have to stick all the way in Pharaoh's system. You must come up with a solution, with an answer, how you're going to live your life. Because today we are working with all strong because we have that capacity. But when we eat 67 and 70, this body no longer responds. So therefore, you have to stop working. And that's where you start your journey of life. Because at that time, you only live with your pension, and your pension is limited because your pension will never be increased based on the settings you need. So that's why you need to be thinking what you are next. Can I just say something to you? Whether you live in Africa, those of you watching me from home, if you are a father and a mother, you have a children, work your way in a, in a manner that after you retire, you can still live without depending on your children. Because what I have come to understand that if you are retired and you're going to live on your children's pocket, your children may not respect you. Your children will be telling you what to do. Our children don't like to hear that. That's another truth that the truth will set you free. So please 
those of you who are still working and uh, in the next 20 years you're going to retire, prepare your retirement very well. You don't want your son or your daughter to say, Mama, you're also spending too much, like now I was telling you yesterday, uh, you said that I need a jumper, uh, a sweat jumper in uh, Mark and Spencer, and the son tells you, oh man, why are you with a jumper from Mark Spencer? We get one for you in drama. You are limited in your decision. You are limited in your choice. People now begin to choose for you. But if you have your own finances, you start to pick the phone and call Mark Spencer and say, I need that job. But because you don't even have that purchase power, somebody else is going to decide for you. And that's what happened between Moses Sarah thought that he can continue to decide for the future of the children of God. But on that very day, God said, enough is enough. That's why I look at the scripture, believers must understand the spirit of Pharaoh in this contemporary time in the spirit of the world system. And the next one, it says, believers must know what that spirit is. Look at the, the, the three uh, things the spirit of Pharaoh in summary means that the spirit of Pharaoh is a wicked spirit. You can find the spirit of Pharaoh in your friend. You can find the spirit of Pharaoh in your own family your home. You can find the spirit of Pharaoh in extended family members. You can find the spirit of Pharaoh in your neighborhood, in your class, at your workplace. People who have been designed just to harm other people. People who have been designed wanting other people to fail. And the next one is the Western spirit. Choose who should come close to you. Choose who you're going to associate with. Choose who shall be your friend. Choose who shall be your wife or your husband. Choose your environment. And then the third summary of uh, a fellow spirit is the Antichrist. Anything to do with God, they are against it. When you say pray, let me pray. Say, ah, this is prayer. We are singing by the Everything pray. I can see my bread and my meat. Why should I pray? I can see what I need. Why should I pray? My car is there. Why should I pray? But what you don't understand, there come a time you cannot drive that car anymore and somebody else will drive it. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This, I'm telling you, is a true story whereby I knew somebody. But that person, the day that person died, his son drove that car. But while he was alive, the son cannot touch him. That's what I always said to you. Even the clothes we are wearing are not our clothes. It's been given to us. Because they can take it and give it to somebody else. The breath we have is not our breath. I remember somebody telling me a, a, a message, a text, I don't know where it came from. Somebody was crying in the hospital because they, put in, they were putting in oxygen. And then the, the doctor, when he came, he said, oh, there's a bill which you have to order for the oxygen to be giving you. And the man started to cry. He started to cry. And when he said, well, why? You can go to the account and the sort things. I said, no, I'm not crying for the money, but I'm crying. For over 70 years, I've been breathing, inhaling, and exhaling oxygen. I never paid a bill. <coughs> but just for a few hours, I have to pay a bill. I'm trying to show you the goodness of our God. Every day we breathe in, we breathe out. But God never tries to ask. But when a man gives you his oxygen, you have to. 
you see Pharaoh, you must understand what he does. If you know what your friends are after you, what you are, they are able to do, you must think or strategize what makes you win. Because if we know what the Pharaoh is capable, is weakened, is a Western, a dark Western, is an Antichrist, therefore, we have to be on our guard. There is no need to be negotiating with the evil spirit. The only language the evil spirit understands is violence through kingdom authority. Look at the screen. To defeat your Pharaoh, you must understand what he does. Now, let me break it down for you here because when you hear Pharaoh, you see, you see that you see that person. It's not Ramses the second because Ramses the second is already dead. Pharaoh here are the spirit that hinder your progress. The people you are associated with who cook evil against you, they are your Pharaoh. In your own family, your brothers and your sisters rise against you, your, your dream, against your achievement, against your aspiration. They are your fail. Sickness that comes on you, they are your fail. Coming up your forefathers men that nobody in this family should get married, they are your fail. Coming up your family men that every man child who is born in this bloodline must die first. That's your fail. If you understand, please say amen. Amen. Young people growing up have no focus to become somebody in life. Whenever you ask them, what do you want to be? Say, I don't know. I never don't know. And you come back three years after and say, what do you want to be? I don't know. When the entire neighborhood is full of idol, that's the fair. When people prioritize abortion every time, that's not fair. When people are into pornography, that's not fair. Anything that goes against the will of God, the prescribed laws of God, that's not fair. Murdering people, that's not fair. That there are certain areas in, in, in the universe Violence is the way to be. And that shouldn't be. It says there's no need to negotiate with evil spirit. The language they understand is scripture violence criticizing your kingdom authority. That authority is in you. You must be able to rebuke anything that is ungodly. Seduction is becoming a norm. So, oh, that girl, oh, she, she really loved me. I didn't expect that. I thank God that girl has come. That's not God. Don't get God involved into those things. God is not into seduction. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the next one, he says that the only language the Spirit of Pharaoh will understand is the language of also of sons and women. When there are signs and wonders, Pharaoh understands. Remember when Moses went to see Pharaoh. Pharaoh brought his magicians and uh, uh, all the sorcerers and threw snake in front of Moses. And God said to Moses, just throw your staff. When Moses threw the staff, his staff became the biggest snake and started swallowing all of them. Because Moses exercised his authority. You cannot be in the house or in life. You see that things are not moving well and you also sit there and you begin to do. 
blame people. Quit the mentality of blaming anyone. God has wired you and equipped you with all you need to better your life. God has given you a brain that you need to nurture so it can provide you with the means and all the abilities you require to fulfill the desire of your heart. Your dream, your goal, your aspiration. God has given you that. But do not live a life whereby you only wait for someone to tell you what to do for you to do it. Quit that mentality. Stop being mentally in the wilderness. Because in the wilderness, nothing grows. In the wilderness, certain things grow. In the wilderness, there is no life. Pharaoh only understands the language of sons and wonders. He understands the language of fire. He understands the language of power, the most in the spirit of God. There are people in life that don't want to hear that a new couple is about to have a child. All oh, these rulers of darkness and the principalities and powers and spirits in the high places will be concocting evil to destroy life. But thank God when you use the language of sons and wonders and fire, they will not come near your home. They will fear you because you're standing in your authority. You say, nothing and God will enter in this house. This is the house of God. God bless me to have it. I bought this place with the money, the sweat of my labor. Therefore, any power contrary to the will of God will not harm me, will not enter here. My wife will be saved. My children will be saved. The blood of Jesus Christ comes out. You exercise your authority. You are speaking the right. Remember the spiritual warfare is the word, the word of word. Whenever you hear spiritual warfare, it means that only those who have the word will succeed. But you have to walk right before God. You cannot go and committing sins and thinking that when you speak the word of God, it's going to work. No. Take the example of Ophni and Penaeus. The turn the church of God has the place of fornication. The turn the place of God has the place whereby they can get the milk and butter. But God at the end disowned them. He told, he told their father. He said, Eli, I will kill your children. And that's why we all know when war broke between the Philistine and the Israelite, his wife gave birth prematurely and gave the name to the child, Ishabot, to the glory of God on behalf of Thomas. We must, my brothers and sisters, understand that if we don't strive to stay in the presence of the Lord, until we are filled with his glory to walk in the realm that can bring defeat to the spirit, it is difficult for you to overcome faith. Seek all ways to be in the presence of God. How do you stay in the presence of God? Through prayer, through the reading of the word, through worship, through prayer, through testimony. You stay in the presence of God. The attendance of the garden of the saints, you cannot miss it. Don't set the standard to be in relationship with God. Follow the standard of God. If you go and set your own standard, you will never know God. And the knowledge of God will have an impact in your life. But when you follow his own standard, as he says in the book of Hebrews, he said, forget not the assembly of the saints. I don't know whether it was here or someone else. I was talking to someone. I said, if you have the strength to go to work every 
today, thank God. Because many people need it. I had a friend, you know when they were building A12 around one cent park in the Eightfold area. Welcome for us. That brother was working so many shifts. In fact, he had a good pay. But one day, he worked 24 hours. After he finished, he went home. As he slept, he never woke up to this day. So now you tell me, all this money you've been working hard for, somebody else is going to be working. When you live every day, thank God, hook yourself with him. Never leave him. Because if you are connected to God, God is in you. As the Bible tells us in the book of John 15, if I abide in you and you abide in me, Whatever you need, God will make it possible. And he goes further, he said, you shall build the house and be dwelling. You shall sow and reap. So who are those going to dwell in your property and building? Those who are connected with God. Those who are following God. Those who do the will of God. Those who listen to Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The next one says, you must preserve and pray without ceasing because the spirit of Pharaoh is a very stubborn spirit. Did you hear that? You must preserve and pray without ceasing. Now, when you persevere, It's not the one thing now. So you may fall and still keep going. You may even be cold or hot or uh, wet. Oh, people laughing at you, people making comments, but you're still pursuing Jesus Christ. You're still pursuing Jesus Christ. You're still committed to Jesus Christ. No circumstances will change your decision in pursuing the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you pursue him, your mouth is full of praise. Your mouth is full of declaration. When we declare here, it's not just I want to punish you to, 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 to confess. No. I want you to use this word when the battle comes. Because if you don't prepare yourself for, for war, you will never have peace. You will never have peace. He want peace. That's what we pray for. More. As the apostle Paul was to tell you the Thessalonians, he said, "Pray without ceasing." When you obey the Lord, allow Him to fight for you. God will fight with Pharaoh. Don't fight Pharaoh. Remember when Satan um, had. Uh, a fight or an encounter or an argument with uh, Michael the angel. Michael didn't say that I command you to die. No. Now Michael said to Satan, he said, the Lord rebuked him. But what did he say? In the name of Jesus Christ, die or fight. No. Because Satan The man is second in command in the kingdom of heaven before he was destroyed and thrown out on, on earth. We need to acquaint ourselves to the word of God. We need to know the will of God in our life. We need to be able to interpret the word of God. Get understanding of the word of God. Be able to stand and speak the word without fear, without guilt, or without condemnation. We have to be proud to be the children of the most high God. Do it by instruction. As Moses 
direct you, children of Israel, so it is your prophet who directs you out of the bondage of Egypt to the righteous God. God is so good. Can you find me uh, Jeremiah 23? I just want to show you something because I've seen it that God is saying that let your prophet direct you. Where is the name of the Lord? Where is the name of the Lord? If you have Jeremiah 15, 3, you could uh, let me have a look. Jeremiah 15. Let's go with me. Never lie to your GP. Because your GP, your 
medical doctor has to know what's going on in your body so you can prescribe him the appropriate therapy. Because if you lie, he's going to prescribe something that will kill you. And then the last one is your lawyer. Never go to your lawyer and lie. Because you will not know how to defend him. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Look at yourself and say, Pastor, now I know. I know who not to tell lie. You know yourself, my brothers and sisters. Don't go. In fact, can I submit to you? Don't tell lie. Don't tell lie. Because the more lie you tell, the more trouble you put yourself. So in verse 28 and 29, we read that you must tell the devil and every fair of spirit that he will never see you again. He will never see your face again. I want you to say this loud and clear. Pharaoh, say this loud and clear. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. you will never see my face again. This day, this day, this month, this month, this year, this year, and in the future, and in the future, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. In Jesus. Pharaoh will never see you anymore. But that is a confession. If you are able to confess that. If you are able to speak to Pharaoh and Pharaoh knows it, he will never come. Praise the name of the Lord. Look, uh, I will give you the meaning of Pharaoh's uh, what, uh, what Pharaoh means first or in more detail. Last week we had a three areas, we look at it, and today I want you to know that the meaning of Pharaoh's spirit or the one system also means the spirit that will put one task of working on the human in the door so that you learn. You, part of this side, should not live below the poverty line. In fact, I'll say to you, I don't want you to live below the middle class line. You should always seek to live above. And I'll say to you, those of you who have uh, lived in the council house where your fat papa or your mama couldn't make it, and you grow up and get a job, you go and sit again in another council house, that's a curse. And I've told you here, in the night of uh, the 2nd of March this year, this month, before we had the ATM, God spoke to me at night and said, Victor, did you know that if you don't have the money, you are committing sin? And I said, how can God ask? If I don't have money, I won't have money. He said, no, you should have money. Because I, your father, sin and God belong to me. So what are you lacking? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's important that we have an understanding that there are certain things in life we shouldn't lack for it. Whenever you need, you hear that, you mean that you are wanting or you needing or you are missing. We are so blessed this day to live above mediocrity. We have to do whatever necessary. Science is a value for everyone. Technology is a value for everyone. If your father and your mother couldn't make it, you have no reason why not to make it. Praise the name of the Lord. The next one. The spirit of Pharaoh is in, is in, is any spirit that challenges by God magic, witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. You know these people where they touch a piece of paper, they say to you, can you see this piece of paper? And they tell you to become money. They say, why? We don't do that. We don't even go close to them. Because God does not want magic. God does not want to do that. God is saying, in fact, among you there should be no sorcery. And that is the spirit of The spirit of deceiving people. Showing that you are sharp, you've got charms, 
But in fact, you are in sin. The spirit of Pharaoh is a spirit that threatens a man of God and is bent and has a task of setting God's people free. So here, people, the spirit of sickness, the spirit of making people handicapped, they cannot fulfill anything in their life. Remember, Pharaoh told the children of Israel to make bricks with their own hands. He refused to give them the instrument required to make those bricks. The spirit of Pharaoh denies you benefit and subject you to rigorous bondage. It is a spirit that refuses to allow God's people to go to the promised land when their servitude is over. This spirit, do you know the spirit of servitude? Where every work you do, the salary you pay you, they pay you, you have to give it to somebody. Whenever they pay you, more trouble comes. You can't even say, you can't even invest. Because money will be going left and right. And the other spirit is the people who gamble. You know the gambling? The people who go to Coral or to go to William Hill, the like William Hill. The people go to you, you pay 355. No, you don't go there for it. This is a spirit of sin. I've seen in my lifetime somebody who died here in Pixie. Because he was gambling so much that that day he went to gamble and couldn't work very well for him. The whole salary went. In life, my brothers, we have no control of tomorrow. We have no ability for tomorrow. It is by God's grace that we still live. This young man was a, an addicted gambler. He would gamble in the morning before he goes to work and gamble in the evening when he comes back from work. Here, He came and see me and said, Pastor, I don't understand. If I don't gamble, I can't sleep. If I don't gamble, I see my, my, my father's and the brother telling me to go to the gambling shop. I said to him, first of all, you need to receive Jesus Christ and then begin to commit yourself to follow him and this spirit will depart. And he said to me, is that all, Pastor? Aren't you giving me anything? I said, I I'm giving you what I have to give you. He said, but I haven't received anything. I said, of course I'm giving you. I've given you Jesus Christ. But the guy ran away. He couldn't come to services. He couldn't maintain the, the, the prayer appointment we said. And on that very day, he was paid. Went to the gambling shop. Played. And then lost every the salary gone. And when he returned home, he locked himself in. And that was it. He never woke up to this day. Gambling is a sin. Any stubborn spirit that chases you around anywhere you go to bring you back into bondage. Remember when the children of Israel left Egypt at the Red Sea? The Bible said that Pharaoh woke up and said, I could have made such a mistake, I had to pursue them. And Pharaoh sent his child, his captains, and left them to follow them. And we all know the rest of the story. They were swallowed by the Red Sea. Now we will never be swallowed by the Red Sea. We will cross the Red Sea in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand. That's it for me, brothers and sisters. We know about the Pharaoh. But please, don't negotiate with Pharaoh. Wake up and take authority. Share this message. But remember, it's not over until God says so. For your destiny 
Is it the hand of the Lord? 